Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. This is going to be, like the name says, a very epic class. We are going to talk about all of the new advancements that uh, Lightroom Classic has rolled out. So I was lucky enough to be one of the speakers at Adobe Max. I got to see this stuff firsthand when they were rolling it out. I was super excited to be able to share all of this information with you. And we're just gonna jump right in and we're gonna start talking about all of the new things that have been rolled out in Lightroom Classic. So we're gonna be talking about Lightroom Classic today. That is the desktop Lightroom that we have. It's not linked, it's not the one that you have on your phone. It's not the one you have on your iPad. This is Lightroom Classic. Now, as they update their Lightroom mobile, they are integrating a lot of this new technology into Lightroom mobile as well. So if you see something here that you absolutely love and you can't wait to play around with, chances are in a couple of months, you're going to have that capability on Lightroom mobile as well. So isn't that exciting? Okay. So first off, there is a bit of a news flash. We're gonna jump right into our first tip. Can you, okay, you guys can see it there. If I bring this up, I'll go ahead and we will bring this into develop for a moment. And I want to just have a news flash and say, the phantom spot removal tool, random spots that you have when you accidentally sync spot removals across images is now a thing of the past. Are you guys excited about that? Has anybody ever had this experience where they have this random blob and they go, where did that come from? And you look and you have synced a spot removal across every single image and all of a sudden there's this random face in the cloud, okay? So that is a thing of the past. So what I'm going to talk about first, I'm just gonna start with this tool here. And this is the new Content Aware Remove tool. So you can see it right here. What this is going to do, it's very similar to the spot removal tool and the clone stamp. But what we're going to be doing is incorporating AI technology of your image into the fix that they use to remove whatever is underlying, whatever you are trying to remove, it's gonna use the AI technology to fix that. So it's a really exciting new aspect of this, um, of this tool. So we'll get started. I'm gonna show you how it works just a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna show you here. We've got an image here. And I'll go into my develop module. We're going to choose the spot removal tool and like I showed you before, we have a content aware remove tool. Now you can see that each one of these is going to have a, the ability to have a different size and a different opacity, which is really helpful because if you were going to do the same thing in Photoshop, what you would need to do is have different layers at different opacities, and you'd have to make different adjustments on those different layers. No, nobody wants to do that. We don't have time for that, right? Okay, so the fact that each one of these can have its own unique opacity, you wanna soften under the eyes. You don't wanna completely remove them. You don't want it to look plastic, but if we've got a big honking blemish, third eye, that's going on, which we know is transient and we know we wanna get rid of it in our image, that's gonna be a situation where you would wanna cover it 100%, right? So having that capability, that flexibility is very important. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate my spot removal uh, tool and then within that is the content aware remove option for that tool. And I'll make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint over this area here to see if we can remove that. Now, as you can see, I didn't give it an area where it needed to pull information from. I didn't clone it, and I need to pick which area I'm using to copy the pixels from. It did it for me, right? If you feel like you would like to maybe change that up a little bit, there are two ways to do that. You do have a refresh button over here, and that's going to allow you to refresh which um, it's gonna give you a different suggestion from the program. 
So you can hit refresh, you can see what they look like. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and hit the H button, which will hide your overlay, and then you can keep hitting refresh and it's gonna give you different options for filling in that hair. So that's very helpful. The other thing that you can do, I will show you in the next image. So we've got this, um, we've got this background here, or I'm sorry, backpack. <clears throat> backpack, backpack, you can see I have toddlers. Okay, so we've got this backpack here, but we don't necessarily like this strap that is, you know, kind of flopping out, makes it look a little bit messy, you know? Um, so what we can do is we can take our content aware remove tool and we can go ahead and um, cover over this area of just that strap that we want to remove and then wait for the program to work. And it gives you almost a perfect fix on the first try. What this is doing is it's using that AI technology and it's looking at the surrounding area and trying to make the best fix. Did that save anybody time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, it's exciting. So um, we're gonna talk a lot about that today. I do wanna just, before I get like super deep into this. If you are one of those people that like takes copious notes feverishly because you know you're not gonna retain all this information, I know your brains must hurt at this point of the conference, it's early. Maybe we went out and had some wine last night, you know, who knows. Um, what, I am gonna give you a link to download all of the notes for this. It's an in-depth PDF of your notes. So I will give you that. I'm also going to include some other freebies, so you definitely have to stick around. Um, so instead of taking notes, take a picture. It may come in handy later <laughs> for a contest. Just saying. Take a picture. Yes? Is this a destructive process, kind of like layers in Photoshop? So is this a destructive process? The nice thing about Lightroom is it doesn't allow you to edit destructively. So everything that you change in this image will never actually enter the raw file that you're working on. They're all written to the XMP file, which is a sidecar file that goes along with that raw image. So I think of like the raw file is my, you know, my motorcycle, and then the sidecar, the little sidecar that you can get for a passenger, that's your sidecar file. They should never be um, divided. If you divide them and you only have the raws, you're gonna lose all of the changes that you made to your images. Yes? So you're importing them as raws, not the image. Correct, yeah. They are, I am importing my images, all these images as raws, or as this is a JPEG that I'm working on right now. But for, for the most part, when I'm shooting, I'm shooting raw. Yeah. Okay, so, um, all right, so I'm gonna continue on. So we've got this, um, this little Christmas tree branch back here that I may want to remove as well. Can you guys see that right behind her? So what we can do is we can go ahead and use the same content aware remove tool, okay? And it'll go over that area right there. Now that doesn't give me the best result by default. Well, that's okay. We have another option, and you can actually see it right here. It gives you a nice little note. Thank you, Adobe. Command plus drag on the photo to select a custom source. So has anybody played around with the new content-aware window in Photoshop? Oh, guys, do it. Okay, if you're Photoshop users, you've got to try out that new window. So what this is going to do is if I hold command or control for my PC users, and I select a area right here. Let's say I wanna use this as my reference, okay? That gives me a better fix, okay? So you can either use the refresh button. The other way you can use the refresh button, um, if you're a keyboard shortcut junkie like I am, the forward slash key on your keyboard is gonna have you uh, redo that heel over and over and over again. If you get something you like, great. You don't have to do the manual, look here and take information from here. This is what I want you to use, okay? But if you do run into a, a situation that's a little bit harder, you can go ahead and um, you hold command or control 
click and drag a box around a certain area and that's gonna give you a better result, okay? So I'm giving you guys like some advanced tips on using the tool. Yes. Is that only for like the classics or any other Lightroom programs? So is this a tip for Lightroom mobile? No, as no, 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 not Lightroom desktop? I think it's Lightroom desktop. <laughs> I'm melting here because there's just too many Lightrooms I can't keep track. <laughs> and if I can't keep track, no one can keep track. Okay, um, I am not familiar with Lightroom desktop. I do a lot in Lightroom Mobile. Lightroom Mobile is the, can you do the dedicated area? I don't think you can yet. You can refresh and you can change the opacity, but I don't know if you can directly say, use this information okay. to make my fix. Is desktop the same thing as Classic? Is desktop, is Lightroom Desktop the same thing as Lightroom Classic? They are not. So Lightroom Desktop is a separate cloud-based equivalent of Lightroom Classic. Lightroom Classic lives on your computer, okay? But we also have Lightroom on all of our other devices. But that Lightroom is Lightroom that's based on the cloud. Yes, it's all Adobe. Yes, it's all Adobe. So that... <laughs> So Lightroom Mobile on your phone, Lightroom on your iPad, and Lightroom Desktop are the same program on different devices. And then Lightroom Classic is its own entity on your computer. Now we're in the dark. <laughs> yes. Are desktop and cloud the same thing? Yes. Are desktop and cloud the same thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I will be here for questions after. If anybody is still confused, <laughs> I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. <laughs> Where is Adobe support when I need them? Okay, so we're gonna move on. I have a lot to cover and I, w I was given strict instructions not to go over my time today. So, um, so yeah, so I wanna get, make sure you guys see all the new cool things that are going on. All right. We're gonna move on. I think that I've done everything. Yep, fill in hair, back, back, backpack strap, command plus draw on a reference point. Okay, we're good. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about one of the new selection features, which is select background. So when I was, when we were starting out and we had our new features, select sky and select subject, a lot of times, people would want to select everything but the subject. Now that's something that can be done, but it required an extra step. You'd have to select your subject, and then you'd have to invert that to select everything but the subject, the inverse of it. But now, if we go ahead and we come in here, do you guys see the zoom? So within our masking section right here, we have select subject, which we are familiar with, we have select sky, which we are familiar with, but we also now have a quick button for select background. And that's gonna allow you to select everything but the subject in one click. All right, so I gave Adobe, I gave Lightroom a pretty hard one on this one, right? Because this is a composite of my daughter that I created. And I put a cloud on top of the sky, but it's not part of the sky it's part of the subject. So, um, so I do commend Lightroom for giving me somewhat of a good selection off the bat, but we do need to work a little bit more on making this a better mask. This is where like m hybrid masking comes in, okay? So there are three different ways we can change a mask that we've already created. One is to add to it, one is to subtract from it, and the third one is intersect. Okay, I will get to intersect in just a moment, but what we're going to do is we'll come into our mask, we're gonna click on it, and what's really nice is that it lays out exactly how you got to your mask here. And every time you add an addition or a subtraction or an intersect, or anything like that, they're all gonna have their own dedicated lines. So it's like breadcrumbs on how you got to your final mask. Does everybody, does everybody follow? 
Yeah? Okay, so we are going to, we want a mask of just the background and not necessarily the umbrella. But right now, the umbrella is part of the background mask that we selected. So what we can do is we can choose the subtract button and then Lightroom is going to ask you, well, how exactly do you want to subtract from this mask? What method do you want to use to subtract from this mask? And so for this, I'd like to use the radial gradient because I know that the size is very similar to what I'd, what I'd like to remove. So I can click and drag in the middle of the umbrella here, and I can just pull that down and just adjust the size. And then this is the amount of feather. This little, um, see that little box right in there? So if I click that, I can change the amount of feather. If I pull it all the way out, it becomes a very sharp edge. But as I pull that inner circle in, it's gonna change the amount of feather that I have. So I think that looks pretty good, all right? And so now, if I hover over my background, it will give you what the background was, the first mask that we created. If I hover over the radial gradient, it will give you just a preview of the radial gradient. But if I hover my mask over the mask one, right, right here where it says mask one, you're going to have a, a preview of the hybrid mask that you're working with, okay? So now that we have our mask, we see that there is an overlay over it. Has anybody ever been, why is it red? Why is my whole image red? I don't understand, I'm not, I didn't add red. I don't know why it's there. This is a way for Lightroom to show you the area in which you have activated as your selection. So we'll go ahead and as soon as you make any adjustments, to that, the red overlay is going to disappear. So what I'd like to do is maybe add a little bit of clarity um, and dehaze to the, to the background to really make those clouds just look a little bit more uh, ominous and just punch up that image. But I know I've already, I've already um, sharpened the subject, so I don't really want any of that additional added clarity or additional added dehaze to be on the subject. Okay, so here is our before and our after. I don't know about you, that just alleviated a mountain of masking work in Photoshop that I would have to do, yeah? So is that an epic change? Okay, cool. All right, so we did our masking hybrid. Does anybody have questions on adding, subtracting? I'm gonna move on to um, intersect in a minute. Um, what, do you guys have any questions? Yes. You can. You, yeah, that's a great step, so, or great question. So if I come in here and I click on my mask, each one of these has a three dot menu, which is dedicated to it. You can rename the radial gradient, you can change it from subtract to add, you can invert it, which is kind of the same thing, but we won't get into that. <laughs> you can intersect, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment. You can duplicate it, add two radial gradients to your mask. You can hide it, you can delete radial gradient, you can also copy it if you wanted to, okay? So lots of different options there. Yes? You need to update. Okay. Yeah, make sure you're working on Lightroom 12, Lightroom Classic 12 and that should fix. Oh, it's a total mess. Yeah, they fixed that though. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Within the background you were doing and you could add a subtract, I was just thinking, why would I want to add? Okay, let's say in the clouds I want to add more brightness on the top right. Uh-huh. Just go to add and then fill in a lighter, a lighter thing. Okay, so do, so, the question is, if I wanted to make a change to a portion of that area that was masked, do I do that in the same mask? No. The reason is that this hybrid mask, even though we have multiple elements, it's all applying the same slider changes to that. If you wanted to go in and say the top corner needs to be brightened, you'd have to do a different mask and you would have to, so you would add a new mask, you would select linear gradient, you would click and drag down, 
and then you would increase that exposure like that. But because that is a localized change, not being applied to the entire mask that we created in the first place, that means that it has to have its own dedicated mask for that. And Sometimes, yeah, yes. When did 12 come out? Lightroom Classic 12 came out uh, in, when was I at Max? Um, so whenever Max was. September? I think September or October. Yeah. Yes? On that mask scenario, do you think it's wider to adjust things? Is there a way to increase that to adjust? Oh, you're just too smart? Just too smart for school? <laughs> Is there a way to apply a preset to a mask? Yes, and I cannot wait to show you those. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Well, we we will. I'll show you the the presets that I've created, and we'll we'll try and make it work for you. Um, okay. So we are going to talk a little bit about intersect. So intersect is basically. Um, like, like a Venn diagram of two different selection methods. Does that make sense? So when you have inters, and it's hidden, and I'm just so frustrated that it's hidden. It should be just right there in the middle between add and subtract is intersect. Um, so when you have a select sky, it's going to select the entire sky, including the clouds. But you only want to darken the blue of the sky. You don't want to darken the clouds of the sky, let's say, okay, hypothetically. So what you would do is you would intersect that mask for the sky with a color restriction, a color, a, a mask for a selection of a color. And you would say, within the sky area, I just want you to select the blue tones within the sky area and leave the clouds alone. And within that, these two make a baby, and it's a beautiful baby, and you're left with a mask that's only on the blue of the sky and not on the clouds. Okay, so that's kind of how intersect works. Just for some between the cloud and the blue? Yes, yeah. Because you're working with color, it gets the subtle gradations of the blues. Yes, because your second selection isn't based on anything but the color blue. Yeah, so I'll show you a real world example of that. So we've got the, um, we've got, again, a clouds. You can obviously see a theme here. Okay, so we've got this image of my daughter, and um, this was one of the first composites I made of her. She was so cute. Okay. So we've got these books in the background, and while I love that the, you know, the sun is shining in from the back, it's kind of giving her a little bit of a rim light. I'm happy with that. Um, what I don't like is the highly saturated red books in the background because they keep pulling my eye away. When you are a photographer, you need to realize what pulls your eye to a certain area of the image. So that is sharpness. Your eye is going to immediately subconsciously go to the sharpest area of the image. It's going to go to the brightest and the most saturated areas of the image and contrasty. So whatever those things are, if you don't want somebody's eye to be distracted by something, you need to work in the inverse of that. So you need to take those things away, make them blurry, desaturate them, make them darker, okay? So that's gonna help really train the eye of the viewer to see what you want them to see first, okay? And this, is, this goes back to the dark room, okay? So we've all been doing this. So I'm gonna start with a um, brush tool and I'm just going to make a really sloppy mask over the backs, the back books back here where I'm getting my distractions from. Okay. Okay. Then, with that mask created, I am going to, you can either, there's two different ways you can do this. You can either come to the three dot menu of your mask one and choose intersect mask with. Or you can hold down Option or Alt, and Intersect will show up. Okay, so if you hold down Option or Alt, then you get Intersect. Well, what do you want to intersect this mask with? How do you want to further refine or further constrain this mask? Constrict, whatever. So I want to do that by color range. 
I'm going to get a eyedropper that shows up. And at this point, because I have a red overlay of the mask, I'm going to turn that off just for a moment. You can do that by turning off the show overlay check mark. And then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to select the red colors of the books. Okay? And so if I turn my show overlay mask back on, you guys can see that if I refine this mask, if I change the refinement slider, I'm expanding the redness, the red um, colors, or I'm constricting the red colors. So it's basically like a, a you can make it bigger or smaller. Okay, so I've got all of my books selected. Now, it's very hard to see because we are working with a red mask overlay over red books that we are trying to adjust. So that's perfectly fine. What we can do is over here, if you see this little show overlay red box, you have the option to change the color of it, change the color of that overlay, or if you click on this three dot menu, we can change how we are previewing the mask. We can change it to um, our image on black and white. We can change it to a overlay color on black and white. You can do the image on white. You can do the image on black. So I can see here a much better visualization of what I am trying to isolate to make the adjustment to, okay? So I'm gonna take this back to show overlay, color overlay so that you know, we don't go into a, you know, a hiding panic, like, what happened? Where, where's my image? Okay, so um, I have the selection of the red books. At this point, what I'd like to do is desaturate those red books and maybe darken those red books. How many people would, how many, <laughs> yeah, 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 wow, wow, exactly. Like, how much time would that have taken you in Photoshop? <laughs> Who would have been there painting each one of those books out? Okay, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Seriously. There was something, I can't remember what it was, and I was like, and like, and Photoshop, this is totally a tangent, but Photoshop like integrated some new feature into a tool. Oh, I remember what it was. It was this, dis before the slider in Lightroom came out for, um, for amount, before the amount slider came out, which you can see right here, this amount slider, um, they were like, well, you can just change all of the sliders. You could just like take that disclosure arrow up and then it takes all the sliders of your brush tool and it like, and it like compacts them into one slider and then you could just change that one slider. And I was like, what <laughs> are you saying? <laughs> I was like, the hours of my life that I would have gotten back um, just knowing that tip is so frustrating. Anyway, so yeah, so this is hopefully going to be a way um, for you to save time with this epic update. Okay? All right, yes? Do you think that Photoshop is integrating this into their platforms as well? Um, do I think Photoshop is integrating this into their platforms as well? Um, what exactly do you mean? Do you mean this? Oh, this masking technology, this masking way. I don't. Um, I think that they are going to stick with their masking way, their masking mode in, in Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, yes. Can I just say that the Lightroom masks are much more precise than the Photoshop masks? Okay, the Lightroom masks, in, in your experience, are much more precise than the Photoshop masks. Yeah, much more, but more. Yeah. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah, nice. So what? So you're also going to be able to download a PDF of all of the new features that Photoshop has also come out with as of um, Adobe Max. And one of the features in Photoshop is the fact that you can now process your select subject on the cloud instead of on your device in Photoshop, and that gives you a better selection. So maybe maybe look into that a little bit, because you can now process that on the cloud, and it gives you a better result. Yeah. Okay, so we've been able to remove the red books. Now, all of a sudden, if I hit my backslash button, you can see the difference. We're definitely focused more on, um, on, our, on our child than we are on the books. 
The next tool that I want to highlight is the option that you have a select objects button here, okay? Has anybody played around with this? It's pretty cool. Okay, so um, I'm going to choose select object here. I'm going to come back up to the top and you have two different options here. You have like a brush over the area where the subject is and you have a draw a box around the area of the object. I'm sorry, I said subject but I meant object. So if I was going to select subject, it probably wouldn't select the, uh, the cloud that she's sitting on as well. So if I wanted to make an adjustment to the, um, the little girl and the cloud, I'd have a problem. I'd have to do the masks independently. I'd have to use a convoluted way of getting to the effect that I want, and I don't want to have to do that. So what I can do is I can click on the box. I can click and drag around what I want um, Lightroom Classic to look for as a selection, and boom, okay? It found the cloud. It found the subject, and I have one mask with one click and drag to, to, yeah. I mean, this is super exciting. Um, I know I'm geeking out a little bit, but if I wanted to increase the exposure on her and just make her pop off the background just slightly, or maybe increase, increase the clarity and the texture on her, we could easily do that by one click and drag and let Lightroom Classic do the rest. Exciting? Yes, yes. yes. Make all the books on the side redder. Can you do that with select object? Can you change the uh, color of the book? The way that I would do that would be, I, he's saying that is it possible to make the books on the right side more red? What I would do is I would do the, the, um, the intersect that I did before but instead of desaturating the red books, I would add saturation to those red books. So first I would draw a mask over the area, then I would go in and refine that mask or constrict that mask by the color reference, and then I have that mask of all the red books, and then I would increase that saturation instead of decrease it. Did I have a question over here? Is there a way that you can change the masking like you can do like the hair refine in Photoshop where you just tweak it a little bit and kind of like inverse it and bring it out more or push it back more? Is there a way to fine tune, add, or subtract from mask? Yes, there totally is. You would start with your initial mask, and then whatever you felt like wasn't included, like let's say if I zoom into this mask, and of course I'm working on a trackpad here, which is not what you want to do for retouching. Um, so I could add to that mask with the brush tool. Whenever you're doing specific, detailed adding and subtracting of masks, that's going to be your go-to. Um, and then you could go ahead with your brush tool activated, just come in here and add this area because we wanted to add that to the mask as well. And now if I hover over that, I've got my initial selection, then I have my added selection using the brush tool, and then I have my, my master mask, which is the changes are being a, a applied to. Yeah. Not at this point. Can you feather these masks? At this point, you cannot, but I would love to see that roll through in a couple of months' time. Did you have a? I was just gonna say, this, and I have this question though, with, with the red books thing, is that you have to do new mask with a new intersect, basically? It, would, would that be a new mask if you're gonna talk about the books? It would, and the reason why it would be a new mask is because you're making a different change using different sliders at different values to do that adjustment than you were for the books that you were trying to desaturate the red from, okay? All right, so I'm going to move on. We, do, we talked about select object. Um, we talked about intersecting of the mask. Um, talked about that. Talked about our masking previews. I have mom brain, so if I don't write down what I want to teach you guys, it's not going to get taught. <laughs> I know. I know. Why doesn't it get better? 
Oh. <laughs> Mom brain just turns into old brain. I love it. It's so exciting. Aging. Oh, grandchild brain. That's a new one. I'll talk to my mom about that. Okay, so the next section that I want to talk about is very exciting as well. We are going to talk, I'm going to start speeding up a little bit on pace because I want to make sure I fit everything in. Um, we are going to talk about select people. How many people have played around with select people? Ooh, it's so exciting. Okay, so I'm going to select my image and I'm going to go ahead and bring it into my develop module by hitting the D key. Again, I am going to go into my masking icon up here. And then if we look down here, we see an area that says detecting people. And once it has been scanned by the AI technology, it's going to give you the faces of the people in your image. Now, if you go ahead and you click on that area, it's going to give you a list of features. Now watch this. You have your entire person. You can make a selection of the entire person. You can make a selection of their facial skin, their body skin, their eyebrows, their eye sclera, which are the eye whites, okay? Nobody knows the word sclera. <laughs> Don't know why they called it sclera. They should have just called it eye whites. Iris and pupil, lips, teeth, and hair. So let's go ahead, we're going to make a mask for our face skin, our body skin, our eyebrows. Her sclera are pretty okay, so I'm gonna leave those alone. The iris and pupil might wanna do a little bit of sharpening. Lips we might wanna give a little bit of color to, um, and that seems good. All right, so one important thing. If you do not have this checked, create five separate masks, I'm pretty sure you're not gonna to wanna to soften the iris the same amount as you soften the facial skin, right? Two different adjustments, two different changes, so we're gonna need different masks. So you need to make sure that create five separate masks is checked for this, okay? And then we're gonna hit create masks, and it's going to create all of the masks for you right here. Mask one, oops, and you can rename these by double clicking. Mask two, body skin, mask three, um, eyebrows, okay, and if you click into these, that's when you're going to see the name of the selection method that was used, okay? It's, I get this question a lot, well, why don't they just make that name the top master name? Because you could use multiple different options, multiple different masking avenues to get to your final mask. So they don't want to name the top master mask the name of whatever you used as your selection method. Does that make sense? Okay, so we've got our facial skin. Let's go ahead and come down here and just, I'm gonna do really quick. We're gonna just slightly decrease the clarity and texture on the facial skin. For our body skin, if I turn off the show preview, you can see that the body skin is less yellow. Is this calibrated? I was just checking the calibration of the screen. Okay, so we've got a little bit less yellow tones in the body skin than we do in the facial skin, and it's also slightly too bright. I see my eye getting drawn to these highlights across her collarbone. So for this mask, what I'd like to do is, I don't need to decrease clarity because um, I, I personally shoot with a very shallow depth of field. So we'll go ahead and just decrease the exposure just a touch and then I wanna match the color value as well to the facial skin, so we'll go ahead and just increase the yellows slightly, and that makes it all more cohesive. Does everybody get that? Okay, so we're moving on to the eyebrows. Let's add just a little bit of sharpening um, and a little bit of increased texture to the eyebrows. Okay, and if you want to at any point hide these silly little icon thingies, you just hit the H key for hide, H for hide, and that's gonna get rid of them. Um, iris, we're gonna increase the sharpness of the eyes, and we'll maybe increase the shadows a little bit, and increase the saturation of those eyes as well. And then our lips, let's add a little bit of color, and um, darken the exposure. So sometimes when you're dealing with certain kinds of makeup, you're gonna have issues with um, flashback. If you've ever worked with a professional makeup artist, the first thing they're gonna ask your model is, are you wearing sunscreen? 
So sunscreen has a lot of um, a, a lot of ingredients in it that are going to reflect the the sun rays from your face. Well, same way they reflect the sun rays, they're going to reflect your flash as well. So um, so sometimes when you use strobes, your makeup is not going to necessarily look the same way that it looks in person. So you may have to make some of these adjustments. And it's not because the makeup was done wrong. It's not because the, it's not because the client is ugly. She's literally drop dead gorgeous, right? It's just compensating for a technical issue when it comes to photography. Because we want the photo, the photo to match what we see in person, right? OK, so, um, so we've done all of these things, right? We've made all of these changes. Now, I am, in this situation, going to go in. Because I'm happy with all of these, I am going to uh, go ahead and rename all of these. So this is facial skin. This is body skin. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this in a minute. This is, what is this? Eyebrows. Eyebrows. OK. Brows. I didn't dark, did I darken those? No. Oh, I just said I was going to darken them and then didn't. Oh, lovely. Can you change color? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you change color? Just wait. I got a good one for you. Um, so this is iris, OK? Just increasing the exposure just a little bit. So we'll do iris. And then lips. OK, so we've done the edits, right? We're happy with the adjustments. They're nice. They're natural. If I hit my backslash button, I'll be able to see the before and the after. And it, doesn't, it shows you some other edits. OK, so there we go. I'm just using this light switch right here for my masking section to do on and off what the changes were that we made, OK? Sorry, which one did you use for the shine? Which one did I use for the shine? Oh, so I, when I was talking about flashback and shine, yeah. it was the lips. So I darkened the lip color just a little bit so that it would match what I saw in person because it was reading lighter once I lit it with light um, with my strobes. OK, so I'm happy with those changes. Now, that's not the only image that she purchased from me. OK, she purchased a lot. <laughs> I'm going to shift, select all of my additional images that she's purchased from me. I'm going to choose sync. Oops, no, I'm not. I'm going to go into my develop module first. OK, so I have, if you look down here, I know my film strip is really small. So I've, this is my master. It has the additional selection around it. You guys can see this brighter, brighter selection. Where, what are my time? OK, good. All right, so, um, and then I shift selected the other images that she purchased, and I'm going to choose sync. And I'm going to start by checking none, but then I'm going to sync my masking. I'm so excited. OK, I'm so excited. I have been waiting for this for years for Adobe to come out with this. This is why this, this is, I'm like totally geeking out right now. Yes. But, it use, but it's a smart batch. It's going to do a smart, a smart synchronization. So we're going to replace those masks. It's going to synchronize after it references the new additional images. It's going to find the eyes in the next image, the next image, the next image, the next image. Apply the eye settings. It's going to find the lips in the next image, next image, the next image. And it's going to apply the lip settings. It's going to find the facial skin. Apply the facial skin settings to all those additional images. I am here to save you time, OK? All right, so there is our next image. All right, I'm going to go here. We can see it found everything that we needed to because we synced the preset, or we synced the settings. That's why, you name your, that's why you name your masks. If I had mask one, two, three, four, five, and six, and I synced it across the images, if I don't know what those masks are, right? And then you've got issues with merging them together. And do you want to replace the masks that are already on other images? Or, or do you want to you know, or do you want to merge them together? So yeah, naming your masks, very important. OK, so we've added them here to this image as well. Completely different lighting setup. OK, completely different clothing. We've come to this one. 
Completely different lighting setup and clothing. They've, all of them have been added. This image, well, her eyes are a little crazy. Okay, so if I go into Iris now, what I can do is I can take the amount slider down on this one, okay? On, the, on just the eyes adjustment, okay? And the next image as well. Taking those iris changes down just a bit. Did that save everybody time? Cool. Yes, we have a question. Sure. Can I show how I did the sync function again? Sure. I started with the first image down here. Okay, right here. I shift selected the other images. Once I did that, I'm going to come over to the sync button right here. And then once you, once you get this synchronized box that shows up, you want to make sure you're not syncing any of the global adjustments. You're just syncing the masking. But because the masking is AI backed, it allows you to find the new eyes, the new lips, the new skin, the new body skin, the new eyebrows for each image. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm really, I'm, I want to show you a couple of things, but I'm going to try and fit this in quickly, okay? So we've got this image here. That is a perfect example for using select object. If I come into my masking, I'm going to create a new mask. I'm going to choose object, and then um, I'm going to use the brush over option to select the shirt. I'm a very lazy masker, so all of this like AI-backed selection stuff is just the, uh, the absolute best, okay? So completely changing the color of the shirt, darkening it a little bit, making it really pop so that I know I'm doing it sloppy. Yes? Now, let's say you mask like a pimple. Would you be able to sync that across several No, you would not, not for the content aware. Yeah, I know. That's a bummer. They're working on that. Okay. They, uh, can you do the same adjustments, syncing them in images that have more than one person? At this point, no. But I think they're working on it. But you can do a manual for multiple faces. And I'll show you that. I just want to show you. So I did, I did go crazy when this first came out. And I created 120 presets of everything that you could imagine um, for this. So, so somebody asked, can you change color? Uh, definitely you can. So I have like a, I have 120 presets and so I was able to just go crazy here. It's detecting everything. So I have different hair colors that you can add for dark hair, for light hair, for medium hair. I have different lip colors that you can add. And you can just, the really fun thing is you can just cycle through them and see what looks good, okay? And the masking, once you apply it, it's going to be a better mask. Right now, it's just giving you a rough outline. But I, I went a little crazy when they first came out because I had been waiting for it for so long. Yes? If you think across multiple pictures of a pimple, if you want just a single person, is it smart enough to find the, the different eyes in the second picture of the person? If you think an image of edits on one face in an image that has multiple faces, Yes, yep, it will do different faces, yes. So if you have headshots of five different people and you want to edit them, and that's a perfect example of how you would add a preset. And so you could take all of the things that we did to this image and you can go ahead and go to your preset section. You can choose, I don't know what they are doing back there, but it's kind of loud. Okay, you can choose the, for the preset section, you could choose the plus symbol, you can create a preset. And within this preset, you can just say, add the masking to my preset, okay? And so you can take that, you can create a general light beauty preset. You're going to save it into the user preset section, I think. That's where it's saved. And then you can come to any other image. Uh, this one, let's try that. You can go into develop. You go into your preset section. What did I call it? General. Oh. General light beauty. General light beauty. I, think you have a preset I do have a preset problem. 
general light beauty. It's going to reference this image. It's going to find the lips, find the facial skin, find the body skin, find the eyebrows. It's going to apply it to that, OK? Super exciting. OK, so, um, so I talked about creating a preset. Perfect. I talked about those. OK, so multiple people. So we've got an image. You give it to the art director. The art director says, we need everybody's teeth whitened except for the girl in the front with the jean jacket. OK? So we're going to go into our develop module, go into our masking panel. And now this is something different is going to ha happen over here. When it's detecting people, it's going to find all the different people in your image, right? <laughs> so we're going to start with person one. Then we're going to add people. We're going to add person two, person three, person four. We're not going to add person five. And we're going to add person six. Then we're going to choose continue. All right, and now it says, well, what do you want to select on those people? We want to select just their teeth, OK? Now, for this, because I know we want to lighten them all, I'm going to just create one mask for the teeth whitening, OK? So we are going to turn off create five separate masks, and we're going to create our teeth whitening mask. At this point, we're just going to come in. I don't brighten the values of the teeth when I'm whitening teeth, what I do is take the, I shift the color, okay? Because nobody likes chiclets, nobody likes radioactively white teeth. <laughs> We've all done it. We've all done it, me too, me included. Okay, so if we go to our before and our after, in three clicks, or I don't know, more than three clicks, but pretty fast, we were able to brighten all of those teeth except for the one in the jean jacket, OK? So hopefully this has saved you guys time. Hopefully this is an epic update. All right. You charge the same that you would have charged if it would have taken you an hour to do that update. So yeah. Yeah, uh, just, to, just to recap, we went into, um, so let's delete this mask really quickly. We'll delete all of our masks. We're going to, so down here in the people section, because this image has more than one person, you have all the faces, they pop up. So we're going to select all the faces that we want, and then the next screen is going to be the features. What on these people do you want to select? We choose the teeth. Yes, within the masking feature. Yeah, within the masking panel. Yep. OK, so um, all right. So I hope everybody has learned a thing or two, right? So I did promise you guys some notes. And there is a, um, I am going to do a bit of a raffle. If you post um, something that you learned in this class and you post and you tag Shark Pixel right down here, Shark Pixel and BH Photo, and you say what you learned in this class, you will be entered to win um, my complete bundle of education, which is over 40 hours of Photoshop and Lightroom training. Um, and um, I'm going to pick a winner in 24 hours, so you guys have 24 hours to do it. Okay? For the free notes that everybody should download, you can go to sharkpixel.com forward slash Lightroom freebies and sharkpixel.com forward slash Photoshop freebies. The Photoshop is going to be all, all the notes for everything that's new in Photoshop as of Adobe Max a couple of months ago. And the Lightroom is going to be what I talked about today in this class. OK? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I do. And I have just been warming up for um, our next presenter, Eric Stoner. He is a awesome uh, photographer, and he's going to talk all about how to use strobes and gels. So thank you guys so much. <laughs>